Chip England is leaving San Antonio. And what does this mean for the Spurs' future? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's Fight San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Quick note, uh, having some technical issues today uh, on the computer, so I apologize uh, for any audio issues on this one. But hey, we're back at it right here on Lowe's. What are we talking about today? Chip England, you know him. Long time name for the Spurs. He gone. He's gone. He's joining the Oklahoma City Thunder. What does this mean for the Spurs? Is this a sign of that there is, there is trouble, trouble in paradise? paradise? And uh, what, else what else could we glean from this? As well as our guest having his own segment, Good Lord, What Have I Done? Let's go ahead and bring him on. He is James Pleasure, my good friend with San Antonio Sports Star. Oh, my God, James, what have I done? I'm giving you your own I segment. I don't know what you've done, but I'm okay with what you've done. Do we do we start with what I uh, want to talk about if there's any time left, we get to chip, or how's this work? No, we're going to get to chip first, because Spurs fans are definitely talking about it uh, because they see trouble in paradise. But how are you doing, man? I'm good. Good. Glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. By the way, everybody, uh, last night, James was just making fun of me via text, like pretty much the rest of the night, just like, <laughs> you got nothing to talk about, do you, Jeff? You have nothing to talk about, because the original segments were just like rehashed topics, so... Uh, Yay, Chip is leaving. Let's give us something new to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I said that, and then this morning that story broke, and I was like, yeah. oh, because it was so ambiguous, like the way it was yeah. originally worded, like <laughs> when his contract's up, which yeah. we didn't know was going to be in like a week or two. We thought right. like, well. How many years does he have left on his contract? Sure. I guess this, yeah. this may be his last year, maybe next year. Yeah, well, let's go to dive into it uh, as well as um, James having his own segment in just a few minutes. And we're going to get into some, some Vegas talk where it, Vegas has the scratches, scratching our heads about the Spurs. But anyway, uh, by the way, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. So let's go to dive into the big news that broke yesterday via ESPN. Uh, the uh, Spurs longtime shooting coach, Chip England, is gone. He is joining the OKC Thunder staff. And according to the report, James, it came down to simply money that they couldn't agree on a new contract. <laughs> Spurs fans are, are flying off the shelf right now. They get like, like the, the ship is sinking. But let's start with that. Um, how bad is it to see a coach of his caliber leave the Spurs? when they're in a freaking rebuild right now. You could argue of the people on the Spurs staff when going into this rebuild with all these young players that you're trying to develop, he was the most important, most important. piece to that rebuild when it came to the coaching staff. Jeez. Yeah. He's done wonders with Kawhi Leonard, wonders with Tony Parker, DeJounte Murray, Keldon. I mean, if you need an immediate example, look at Keldon night and day with his three shot, thanks to Chip England. This was Danny Green. Very, Danny Green, a very key assistant coach that you needed to keep on this team in this rebuild. But he's gone. And again, the report says it came down to a new contract. They couldn't agree on it. That's just a fancy way of saying money. Um, this is a bad look. Is this a bad look on the franchise right now? Um, it's hard to say just because you don't know what the actual monetary or even maybe he wanted stake in the team. I don't, I don't know what his contract demands were, so it's really hard to say this is a bad look without really knowing what he was pushing for. But it looks bad optically at first glance because he is such an integral part. He's been here for 17 years. The Spurs are about poor Vita family, you know? Yeah. And you can argue outside of Pop, he's about as fam Pop and RC, he's about as close to the family as you can get. Mm -hmm. So 
to see him walk out the door after you see DeJounte Lee, like it's it's hard to buy into that family mantra all of a sudden because you know Pop ain't long for the job. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's he's, he's regardless gonna, yeah. of yeah. everything. Like just Pop's not long for coaching. Period. Much longer. Well, here's the, here's so the thing. It, you wonder what the direction of this franchise is other than complete rebuild. And even with a complete rebuild, you're, the question still remains, if you're rebuilding everything and you're going to yeah. end up changing coaches soon anyway, why – if the assistants are changing and your coaching staff and your shooting coach, like why not just rip the entire bandaid off? Because mm -hmm. initially your thoughts are, well, did pop give them like, Hey, this is probably my last hurrah kind of thing. I'm on my way out the door. And that's why, you know, Becky took the job and that's why, you know, chips oh. leaving, but we have zero indication that this is it for him. Other well, than you, just gut feel. You you can kind of sort of start reading some tea leaves a little bit. Uh, the big one right now we're talking about is chipping and leaving. You know, I mean, you're talking about family member. This is a long-term family that member that left. You have uh, Becky leaving. You have Brett Brown coming in. Uh, could he be the replacement? You know, kind of shake off the coaching rust for him after a year. He's been through a developmental slash trust the process thing before in philadelphia so perhaps this could be the biggest sign leaning towards pop's exit but i want to talk to you about this you know you're talking about how vital chip should have been in this rebuild you have a jeremy sohan who offensively isn't that good uh and when it comes <laughs> to just uh you know the outside perimeter shot we know he has some some work in the paint but you want to expand his game yeah blake wesley who openly admitted to me on on draft night says my shot needs work and we saw that in the summer league he's a chucker he was putting up like what 15 20 shots a game and he was making sure. what four or five so there's that and you got malachi brown he says he's a three level score what better way to up that three level scoring than with chip england so sure. yeah i mean talk about a hit to the development huh james it, it really it really feels like it just because we knew this was what it was but you have the faith of, oh, you know, we've got one of the great, greater, like, all we know is he's great. The players swear by him as uh, and his practices. So at least if they're willing to put in the work, and I always place that with a caveat because we put so much on Chip England. Like, oh, man, he's the greatest ever. It's like, sure, but it, it's on the player. The player's got to put in the work to mm -hmm. completely reinvent a shot, which is not easy to do. Imagine mm -hmm. writing right-handed your entire life and having to switch to left-handed. Like, mm -hmm. it is a thing to have to relearn and rebuild your shot from the ground up to get rid of a hitch or a funky motion or whatever it may be to make your shot more efficient. It is difficult and it takes time and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work and a lot of hours in the gym so I, I chip is great at that but i also want to make sure that the players who put in the work get their due diligence and their credit for what they did to reinvent their shots like Kawhi Leonard did like DeJounte Murray did like Keldon Johnson did this past off season it's right. there's a lot of work that goes into that when you're especially talking about building the shot and fixing a shot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's first and foremost. But other than that, like it's so in shot, there is a little hitch in it. And mm -hmm. you, at least you felt comfortable taking him at nine and being like, all right, he's going to work right with, with chip, chip yeah. and it's if he's willing to put in that work like it's going to get better quickly 
Now I, that's a big question mark. Yeah. I have a big question for you that we're going to get to in just a few minutes. Uh, we're here with James Pleasure. He is with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on Twitter at I am Pleasure. He is also the co-host of the Saturday Morning Hangover. He's going to brag about what he and his crew are doing later on in the show over at the Star. But, hey, let's talk about Built Bar. The cookie dough chunk puff is here. If you haven't tried it, Built Bar Puffs. Well, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. Guess what? There's a new flavor. I just said it. The cookie dough chunk puff. Delicious, indulgent chocolate. Well, cookie dough covered in 100% chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. It is the cookie dough chunk puff. They have a light, chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And, of course, as I mentioned, 100% real chocolate. It's the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. And it's healthy for you. That's the bonus. The cookie dough chunk puff are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in each and every bar. Go get you some right now at Built.com. Get yourself a box for you, for the family. It's a perfect treat. You can find a really good hiding place and just order for themselves. That's what I usually do, James. I just hide them from all guests that come over to my pad. I go, don't look in that cubby hole. That, 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 those are my chocolate um, chunk puffs, cookie dough from Built Bar. What's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein. That's just a fancy way of saying that it gets into your body more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff, whether you need a snack for a workout, late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite. Get yourself some at Built.com. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15, 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15. We're back with Jane Pleasure right here on Lockdown Spurs. We're discussing the exit of Chip Anglin and the ripple effects it's going to have on the uh, franchise. In a little bit, we're going to get into some uh, Vegas news, scratching our heads, and then the oh, good Lord Dreams is going to have his own time to say whatever he wants to talk about here on Lockdown Spurs. James, uh, mm -hmm. one big question mm -hmm. I have for you is this. Is this also a sign of low-key coaching changes for the inevitable move? A uh, Popovich leaving, for example, yeah, I mean, they, already, they already know who baby's going to take the reins, and that person said, "You know what? Yeah, I want to bring in my own staff." Uh, sure, and I think the front runner for that is uh, uh, Brett Brown. But if I was to place money outside of Brett Brown taking over, it would probably be Quinn Snyder, who yeah. you know, once again, first time. But he's being from the tree. I don't understand the change in terms of you know chip england like everybody loves chip england people that have been here people that have come through here they know chip england so that doesn't make sense the only thing that makes sense is there is a there is a powder keg a storm brewing it feel it sounds like if you look over towards the kansas jayhawks mm-hmm there are some rumors coming out of there. The things can get really intense, really fast over there. And if he were to leave, knowing his ties with R.C. Buford, San Antonio could finally get that young guy that knows how to relate to young players, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, with his time in college and everything, dealing with one-and-dones and everything else he's dealt, dealt with. Maybe that's something to keep an eye on if we're talking about the future of the Spurs and a future coach of kind of a dark horse name would mm -hmm. be Bill Self. I mean, it'd be mm -hmm. weird that for the first time ever, the coach's name will be on the front of the jersey. Yeah. And here's the thing, too. Uh, <laughs> Bill Self has very has been very adamant, kept on. He's gone on so many shows and podcasts and articles and interviews saying that he has nothing to do with the future of the Spurs coaching staff. But, hey, never say never. And this is one of those situations where the right contract, the right deal, the right opportunity to come to the NBA level, you know, could not uh, blame self if he goes back on those words and signs in San Antonio. What about uh, what about Wright out of Villanova? Do you think he could be a good candidate? I, I personally love Jay Wright. He's that kind of coach to me. And it would be an incredible get if he were willing to, you know, come back into coaching. But I know at least in terms of Villanova and what went on there, it sounds like he's just burned out. And yeah. 
maybe he needs a year to recharge his battery, but he's got a lifetime gig basically Mm -hmm. at Villanova. So he was on pop staff for Team USA, and there is high regard both from the Spurs organization and from him when he was actually here in San Antonio this past year talking about the Spurs and their organization. So I would absolutely love that, but I wouldn't have my hopes on something like that at the same time. Um, Mm. It's just the the one thing that's so weird about this entire thing with Chip England is the fact that this is a breakup due to contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, which insinuates money, which Mm -hmm. when there's no cap on a coaching staff as to what they can make i find it just very odd of the timing and the reasons right and let's not forget about this so many other coaches have moved up that coaching staff why hasn't chip had you know i don't see him getting promoted to second chair first chair you know you never see that and Perhaps he also wanted to move up, or he, maybe. or maybe he he felt like, hey, you know, it's obvious Pop is Pop's time is winding down. Give me a really good, uh, you know, promotion. Give me that first chair, or dare I say, even the big chair. So, uh, you know, there's that to factor in, and he's he's joining an OKC team that is young, a lot of better, younger players that are more developed than the current Spurs roster, and. Yeah, you can't blame him, but remember DeJounte Murray uh, when he had that flurry of pot shots at the Spurs? And in one of them, he said, like, things are bigger. It's like problems over there are bigger than basketball. Maybe he was letting yeah. on to yeah. something there. I mean, everything in hindsight seems to look like it has more meaning the more time passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just. I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around basically everything we've ever known the Spurs to be falling by the wayside. Yeah. When it comes to, uh, you know, the the Spurs are one to hold on to a player a year or two longer than to let them go too early. Mm -hmm. They always have been. You know, it sounds to me if you if you get it, you're just reading the tea leaves and making educated guesses because that's all we can do because you know the Spurs are our vault. They're not going to let you know what's going on, but it, it sounds to me like there's friction, like there's some friction behind the scenes of the direction the franchise wants to go. Uh, you know, you know, Pop still signs off on deals. Brian Wright openly admitted it, saying like, mm-hmm. "No, it wasn't me. You know, I it was me and Pop and RC. Maybe there's a." Faction saying, hey, you know, time to uh, change the guard here in San Antonio. And the old heads are just saying, no, we still run it. And I want to go this way. I want to go this way. Bring in this coach. No, I want this coach. Chip should stay. No, somebody else should come in. And then Chip's like, you know what? I'm out of here. Y'all, y'all are good. Yeah, you know, it's a peace out. So, but yeah, I mean, optically, it doesn't look good for the Spurs. You, They usually treat their long-term people good. Really good. Extremely good extremely good and here's a guy that they didn't break the bank for who gave you what 17 seasons 17 years 17 years of you know making some of your legends that wore the silver and black in uh up their games tony we mentioned uh the the big one free throws throws. you know Dejounte. you know he became an all-star because he started knocking down the little midi uh, yeah, you 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 just kind of scratch your head at this, and gotta wonder like what is going on in the Alamo City. We're talking with James Pleasure right here on Locked On Spurs, and we're just wrapped up talking about Chip England. But we want to hear from you. Why do you think he left San Antonio for OKC? Is it something as simple as hey, we just couldn't agree to a contract? Or do you think there's more to it? Let James know on Twitter at I am Pleasure. Let me know on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. Speaking of head scratchers. I'm glad you're on this episode of Lockdown Spurs because your Rockets, according to Vegas, have a thousand to one odds, according to Bet Online, that odds maker, of making of being the last team standing next season. 
Okay. Right. So exactly. So okay. So you're probably, that. Yeah. That, that sounds like it pays off pretty well. Yeah. Oh, here's the thing too. So the Spurs, you would think they'd probably have 2,000 to 1 odds. No, they have better odds. Not by much, but 500 to 1 odds. Of, do you feel disrespected? Do you think your Rockets are being uh, looked over? Yeah, a little bit. But at the same time, I mean, they've earned it over the last two years. <laughs> you can't be mad about that. But with what the Spurs have done this offseason, it's hard to envision the rock like if you were to just before this episode and i think we've had this conversation teams that passed the spurs this year after dejounte after the dejounte move Everybody. you know i would have talked about sacramento i would have talked about houston i would have talked about oklahoma city you know yep. <laughs> Yeah, um, pick a team, basically. Possibly Orlando. Like, if you're talking about teams that possibly passed the Spurs this year, they were one of them. And they, a big reason is how they were playing at the end of last season, plus mm-hmm. what they added this year. And especially Tari Eason, the way that he's played, mm-hmm. uh, getting Jabari. All summer league team. Yeah. Like, you, you feel very, very confident and – excited about the future of the Rockets and you know maybe this is that first year where they, they take a step they're not quite into the plan yet but they take that step from the bottom up and this team starts to learn and then you have one better in peace in the offseason and off they go you know when you're dealing with a young team I don't I mean maybe Keldon takes that big of a leap this year and Devin at the same time and Josh Primo, but man, it's hard to envision outside of, you know, Keldon, basically, not even basically, being an all-star. Mm-hmm. Devin, uh, uh, Keldon asserting himself mm-hmm. into that all-star stratosphere. Like, exactly. that's the only only yeah. way I really see them being better than the Rockets because Jalen Green figured it out it clicked last mm-hmm. season for him in the second half and then goon's gonna take a step you expect somehow. him to be even better this year yeah and he's already kind of knocking on the door of all-star and star status and don't forget about sangoon alperin sangoon i mean he they kill alperin sangoon um kevin porter jr you add jabari smith and tar eason into that uh josh christopher played well last year mm-hmm. coming off the bench like they've got pieces they're young and they're learning but they have pieces at least with the spurs i say devin i say keldon i say primo question uh, yeah. mark yeah i'm i'm still i'm still with the jury's out for primo i st- i gotta it's, see him it's play. way out on him Mid- what i saw in summer league no. did not give me yeah. rosies you know no, i did not, not feel good and with butterflies in my stomach in a good way I know, but hey, there it is, Spurs fans. Uh, yay, a small victory, maybe. You know, hey, better odds in Houston. So, Spurs fans across the world probably taking that, knowing that. Can can I place a long. bet on the on the Rockets having a yeah. better record than the Spurs? Is that a bet yeah. I can place in Vegas? Because that Play it now. I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put some money on that right now. I'm putting money on that too as well. I I know how I can make some money right now. That's how to do it. Okay, so what do we get back? I feel like this is a scene from Arrested Development when Job is just sitting there by himself saying, a huge mistake. Yeah, I'm in that position right now. When we get back, James is going to take the mic and he's a, within reason. He's going to talk about whatever he wants. So, yeah, brace yourself, everybody. <laughs> We're back with James Pledger right here on Lockdown Spurs talking about the silver and black. Just wrapped up talking about Chip England's exit as well as Vegas giving... The Spurs better odds to reach the title than the Rockets. Yeah, let us know on Twitter at I am Pledger and on uh, as well as me at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So, James, I've made a huge mistake. The floor is yours, sir. Well, in case you were under a rock this past year or this past week, uh, you may have uh, not noticed if you were under Seb Rock that San Diego Comic Con went on and. While I wasn't expecting a lot of big things from Marvel, just due to the fact that they usually hold their things back for their own 
basically con and D23. You had DC come out with their Black Adam trailer and their Shazam 2 trailer. And it was like, everybody was very excited following those two trailers. And then Kevin Feige said, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's had so many questions about the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what Phase 4 has been doing, which, granted, it's understandable. I understand all of that because we we know Marvel is this big entity with a plan and everything ties together and seemingly so far it hasn't. But remember, this is a starting of telling an entire new story since the end of the Infinity Saga as we now have what this these next phases are are all in reference to, which is the the multiverse saga and so in finding that out we also got to remember remember when we first saw iron man and then iron man 2 and the mm -hmm. incredible hulk with edward norton and thor and captain america and everything was kind of cool because you knew it connected but you didn't know where everything was really headed especially throughout the entirety of that first phase when we got to the Avengers movie. And then all of a sudden, Thanos, the big bads revealed. Well, at the same time, that's kind of what this is. This was laying the groundwork in phase four of dealing with the aftermath of what happened in Endgame and, and new roles and everything that's happening. And it doesn't seem like there's a direction that it's pointing, but it is. It's all pointing to a direction. And we found out what that is at San Diego Comic-Con. And the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe looks incredible because we got phase five and parts of phase six revealed that have incredible repercussions throughout, including two Avengers movies and the yeah. fast Fantastic Four movie finally coming. I mean, this is incredible, especially knowing the names of those two back-to-back -back Avengers movies, The Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Woo! I cannot wait. And I and I apparently um some people who've seen a teaser for Quantum Mania uh, have uh, spoken that yeah. Kang's already Kang's already talking some smack. So he's already As talking that smack. Oh my god. What do you tell Ant Man? Like, oh wait, like, You're who are you? Like, have I yeah. killed you before? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, Kang is coming with a vengeance. Yeah, phase four felt disjointed for the most part. It really did. Like, where's the tissue? The the closest connective tissue I saw was Loki. Because you saw the 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 breakage of the multiverse everywhere, you know, from Multiverse and you madness. saw it, but everything's kind of dealt with that. You saw mm -hmm. Spider-Man deal with that. They're dealing with both that and realms. Realms right. have been a huge thing, whether it's Moon Knight and the Egyptian death realm. Mm -hmm. We saw Valhalla at the end of Thor, Love and Thunder. Uh, spoilers, everyone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you had uh, the, the realm that the clandestine we're trying to mm -hmm. get into when we're watching miss marvel like realms and multiverse seem to be the giant yeah. thread that is right. tied phase four together so far we, we saw it in shang chi as well shang chi realm. another realm yep so uh and it's all leading up i mean if you're not into comic books like james and i are it's leading up to secret wars that's where all these universes are going to collide and uh but I'm looking forward to Kang. I feel like that's been the missing ingredient so far is where are we going with this? And I guess it's going to be what new Avengers light kind of sort of, right? Yeah, it definitely yeah, feels Avengers like light. it's trending that way. Yeah, it's going to be the new We've Avengers. We've got Miss Marvel. We introduced Kate Bishop. There's Cassie Lang Stature coming soon and Ant-Man Quantumonia. Um, getting She-Hulk. Uh, She-Hulk with uh, Jessica Walter. Walter. Exactly. Um, and by the way, <laughs> the reveal, not only of the fact that Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio are both returning to reprise mm -hmm. their roles in a new Disney Plus series, 
that is 18 episodes long. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do that. Yes. What they named that episode or that series Daredevil Born Again, which if you know the comic title, you know exactly what happens. And I am here for it. Mm -hmm. We are getting ready. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is James Pledger taking the mic and nerding everybody out here oh, on Lockdowns First. Before we, oh, before yeah, we sweep but... everything under the rug, the, the feels that you got, because I know you've watched it, when Kevin Feige and Ryan Coogler dropped the Black T Panther 2 oh, Wakanda God, Forever yeah. trailer. Yep. Like, just talking about it, I already feel my hair standing up. Like, yeah. it was powerful. Yeah, it was powerful. Yeah. Um, I love the uh, I love the Namor reveal. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems like he's sticking close to his comic accuracy because Namor is very much so. He's very business. Like he ain't make friends. He's just business and taking care of his people. That's it. So and it looks like they got the perfect actor to play that role. But yeah, I mean, what a way to put a cap on Phase Four as we enter Phase Five. And I think uh, technically She Hulk is still part of Phase Four, correct? Yes, because it yes. drops okay. next month. Wakanda Forever is going to be the end yeah. of yeah. Phase 4. That's okay. the cap of Phase 4 before we start off into Phase 5. If you want to join this nerd conversation, <laughs> you can let James know on Twitter at I am Pleasure. And he's not done taking the mic, though. He's going to brag about what he and his crew are doing over there at the Star. What you got? Well, the star is in a busy spot because starting next week, we are live from Oxnard, California, all day long. R&R &R in the morning, 7 to 10, with Rudy J, Rob Thompson, and myself every morning getting you up early. And for them, it's even earlier because it's uh, <laughs> 5 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock <laughs> when we start prepping on California time and 7 o'clock is five o'clock when the show starts over there <laughs> so uh <laughs> we get it going early seven to ten here central standard time uh michael jimenez halftime noon to two of course mike a very prominent part of the locked on spurs mm -hmm. and of course you got joe ryan Eagle and jason mitz minix taking you home all day from four to seven as live from the tennis courts at cowboys training camp Usually great things happen out there. We talk to Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, um, Zeke Elliott, Dak Prescott. Like we are going to be in it. I remember a few years ago we were there when Zeke's holdout ended. He signed his contract and reported back to training camp. We were there for that. We were there when Kellen Moore broke his leg and it, uh, Tony Romo was already hurt. And that thrust Dak Prescott into the starting job as a rookie and people were very unsure about what they had in the Dak Prescott at the time. So usually big things happen while we're out at Cowboys training camp, and I would expect nothing less this year. Yeah, don't forget to check out James as well as the Saturday morning hangover, as well as the meta. He oh, was thank you. on the meta. He and Jack doing their thing on the Saturday morning. Yeah, just more reason for you to check out the star. San Antonio Sports Star every single day. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app, the Ken's 5 YouTube page. One more day, James. One more day, and I can just kind of relax already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Can starting, take a breath. I can take <laughs> a breath. You know, starting with hires or something. Exactly. <laughs> starting next week, uh, the first of the month. Uh, Lockdown Spurs will be uh, winding down for the off season, two to three a week. Yeah, you know, of course. Watch your day, day off is going to be interrupted with yes. like pop. That's going to be my luck. <laughs> That's going to be my luck. Like, okay, thank God, no lockdown today. Not have a bug, James anymore. At least for a while, as much. Then no pop, like me. <laughs> James, get on the get on the phone now. We need you. Uh, huge yeah. things. Yeah, huge things. But James is always down for it. Uh, James was down for uh, the big trade. I mean, James is the first one to uh, jump on with me here with DeJounte Zegman. So wouldn't be surprised if that happens again here on Lockdown Spurs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for your second listen. Check out Lockdown NBA. 30 minutes of all the NBA news you need in just one podcast. Subscribe to Lockdown NBA. So for James Wakanda Forever, pleasure. 
I am <laughs> Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long.